Ari the Addisons. Let me say this, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got to be careful and make sure that in everything, man, we are trying to get as close to what the word says as possible. And we got to understand that with that type of wickedness, man, you know, God does not wink at that. That's judgment. Promoting truth, wisdom, and empowerment. And you don't have shades of truth. You have truth or you have error. You have fact or you have fiction. Mm -hmm. And now we go into the thick of it. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Aaron Addison's on American Family Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you allowing us to spend uh, this afternoon with you. Um, wherever it is that you find yourself, thank you for inviting the Addisons in. We appreciate it. I'm Miki. And I'm Will. And Sherry B. is over in Studio CC. Um, you can connect with us um, through various ways. You yes. can Social media. You can look for Aaron the Addison's page on Facebook. That's right. Here we oh go. Goodness. Let's look at the topics of, this, of today. Okay. Right. Um, did we get all of the information out of the way that uh, we needed to discuss? I think so. Here is my question for you as we turn into what we are actually going to discuss. People are like, they tune in for the Addisons because it's drama. Mm-hmm. They're like, we get all the serious, heavy content from AFR in the morning. <laughs> and then in the afternoon, we get days of our lives. But, you know, we about to turn the coin and we go. We are. Into the thick of it. Oh, yes. Into the thick of it. Yeah. Very good. Into the thick of it. Yes. But we can't see where we're going. Don't worry, little one. We will see soon enough where we're going. <laughs> we got you. We have a flashlight, right? All right. Here we um, go. So here is my question for mm-hmm. you. Are we automatically, as Christians, are we guilty by association today in Christian Mm. culture, Christian circles? For example, my question is this. If a person is associated, and we'll have to get to this on the other side of the break. Mm -hmm. If a person is associated or speaks well of a person we know to be the enemy of orthodoxy, Mm. do we then say that person is also the enemy of orthodoxy if they speak well of an unorthodox person or do we say um maybe there are things they don't know about that person maybe the Mm. accolades are not meant to be taken as okay that's a good question a full endorsement okay this is what I want to explore today. Also, I want to take a look at your friend, Joy Bayard. Uh, you love no, her. That's not my You friend. love Joy. No. You love her. Look, Sherry Don't B. Do that. Y'all both, that's just, be- okay. <laughs> anyway, she had a little misstep. Didn't plan for that. Oh, we'll wow. look at that and more. Erin the Addison's American Family Radio. We'll be right back. So guilty by association, that's the question. I was reading this yeah. article, and I thought we could have a conversation around this. And this article is from Reformation Charlotte. You know, I check their website from mm-hmm. time to time and, yeah. and check out their articles. Um, I do believe that they have their ear to the ground, and they're watching things that are going on right. that could be problematic in the body of Christ. And so I think this is all a good thing, right? And um, and this article that I saw, I was like, whoa, I was really kind of bothered by it. If I said the name Max Lucado, everyone mm-hmm. immediately recognizes yeah, that name. I think definitely. Like, over 11 million copies of books sold. He's a prolific writer. I mean, he's a pastor. Just a solid name, like yeah. Max Lucado. You know, I mean, right, right, you right. probably have a, you know, you, you probably have one of his books, or one of his books, or something like Sitting that on your bookshelf, yeah. right? And uh, so this article was talking about how Max Lucado was recently on a Jen Hatmaker podcast episode. Yeah, giveaway. Well, I don't know. <laughs> and that's what I would like to talk to you about as we go yeah. into the thick of it. And I don't want you to jump to conclusions here. Okay. I, I mean, All come right. on. You don't be Paul about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So I read the article and I thought, well, the best way for me to know if this is an accurate perception of Max Licato is to go and listen to the podcast. And so I didn't want to just hear this portion that was mentioned on Reformation Charlotte. I wanted to hear all of it because Mm -hmm. sometimes I think, you know, if we just take one part of an interview, we might mischaracterize a person. But here is the headline. The headline is evangelical pastor and author Max Licato endorses pro-gay Jen Hatmaker. And so Hmm. I thought, wow, that's a big claim. Uh, That's a huge claim. It's a huge claim. And so if you're not familiar with Jen Hatmaker, Jen Hatmaker's books were pulled from the Lifeway bookstores um, a few years ago when she came out as pro-homosexual. She endorsed gay Christianity and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and, and I don't want to couple these, these things together. I'm going to say one thing, and then I'm going to give a disclaimer here. She, okay. was, she had this campaign of, like, you know, giving um, pride marchers hugs and signs, like, you know, yeah. a mother hug to right. a, you know. 
which there's nothing wrong with that except mm-hmm. that it was attached to a statement. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And so mm-hmm. this is sort of Jen Hatmaker's lane that she has carved out, um, also being pro-woman, which today pro-woman has its own meaning. So mm-hmm. Jen Hatmaker is, you know, she's she's kind of a, she's a Christian feminist mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, okay? Mm-hmm. And it became problematic, and so Lifeway pulled her materials. Um, well, anyway, she recently sat down to interview Max Licato, and what Reformation Charlotte points out is that Max Licato was kind of singing her praises, okay? Mm. So quoting from the article here, and then we're going to play a couple clips for you, but quoting from the article, um, Max Licato, and I heard this part of it, said mm-hmm. to Jen Hatmaker, quote, I think so highly of you. You energized me to listen to your podcast the other day. I caught myself needing to get out of the car, Mm -hmm. but I was listening to your podcast and I just sat and I just sat and I just sat. You make it so easy and delightful and yet profound at the same time. He continues praising her and your heart. And you know what else I like, Jen? You bring me in touch with a circle of believers that I might not typically have contact with, you know? Mm. He, He goes on. You expand my circle and that's good for me. I don't really like my preconceptions to be tested but it's good for me. And sometimes when I listen to your podcast, I just feel stretched tighter than a trampoline skin, but it's good. It's good. And I really need that. And I appreciate it. End quote. Um, So he's saying, you stretch me, you introduce me to a circle of Christians that I would not normally be introduced to. Um, That on its face is not necessarily problematic for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can see how the writers over at the website Reformation Charlotte are looking at this and they're going, right. hold on a second. Jen Hatmaker's circle of friends right. are, you know, the celibate Christian, gay celibate Christian people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's because you know, of Jonathan who she Merritt. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. So I can see how if these are the friends that we have in mind, mm-hmm. you're going, wait, 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 Max. <laughs> right. Hold up, brother. There's a reason why you're not in that circle. <laughs> yeah. And you don't need to be stretched in this way. Right. 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 So I listened to this, and I listened, giving Max Licato the benefit of the doubt. I feel like he has right. earned it as a mainstay in um, what we would consider the public scene of Christianity, mm-hmm. right? So he's earned this benefit of the doubt. Well, as I continued listening to the podcast, I thought, well, now hold on, Reformation Charlotte. Did y'all not get this part? I mean, if you want a headline, mm-hmm. there's a bigger <clears throat> headline than him saying, you introduce me to people that I've not known and stretch me. Right. There's some problematic conversation coming from Max Licato himself Mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the endorsement of Jen Hatmaker and that is what I want to have a conversation around um we're kind of in this we're drifting a little bit in Christianity because we are we've been introduced to some concepts Mm. that if we don't immediately cast those things down or filter them through scripture and I say this respectfully Max Licato has earned the right to be respected among Christians I want to make that very clear okay I'm I want to respect my elders in the faith, right? But this was this was problematic. Let's go with this. I think it's clip one that mm-hmm, you have, mm-hmm. where he's talking about what his church is going through, an exploration of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to listen carefully here. This is Max Lucado, clip one. So we are very interested today um, to sort of mine the depths of your experience and learn from that. But I, I wonder if if you would be so kind. Uh, most of my listeners obviously know who you are and um, have for years, but um, I would love to hear first, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind, about kind of where you are right now in this stage of your life. What's going mm-hmm. on in your in your family, in your home, in your ministry? What you're focusing on? We kind of want to know what is today's max. I'm still at the same church. Yeah. I've I've been at the Oak Hills Church and. San Antonio since 1988. Wow. I've moved moved here from Brazil, yeah. and uh, and then we just just stayed here. And uh, I think that's going to be part of our conversation. You know, mm-hmm. is is uh, in terms of longevity and and uh, uh, avoiding cynicism and yep. keeping faith fresh. Uh, uh, part of that is the, is this church. Uh, that has uh, put up with me all these years. Mm. Right now, I'm in a role at the church that we call teaching pastor. Yeah, and that means that I'm not in charge of the staff anymore, mm-hmm. which is great for me and really great for them. 
and I'm learning. I'm learning. I, I'm I, my exciting thing these days is a, a greater love and appreciation for the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Uh, I, I feel like my heart has been activated uh, to to a deeper appreciation for what He does and how hmm. desperately we need Him or Her, however you want hmm. to call it, the Holy hmm. Spirit. And uh, it so that that's a nutshell right there. No, 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 hmm. no, no. So, so we have a bigger problem with our brother here yeah. because it's not about him saying Jen Hatmaker introduces me to people who mm -hmm. stretch me or that she herself stretches me. Mm -hmm. I think you can take that caution and then couple it with this kind of the shack type understanding mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and say, whoa, whoa, brother Max, right. um, <laughs> that's a problem. That's a, that's a problem. John chapter 14, I mean, among others, okay, <laughs> right, right. the Holy Spirit is described using male pronoun. Mm -hmm. He is a part of the Godhead. Do you understand? And I wonder if he felt like some pressure to, to do that because of who he because was talking to. Because of talking to a feminist. Right. And because of this move to erase distinctions mm. between maleness and femaleness. Now I have heard, I've heard some people say, you know, look at God describing himself and saying he's loved to gather you as a mm -hmm. hen gathers and all of these, but, but that aside, <laughs> let's understand what God says of himself. Amen. Let's understand what Jesus Christ said of the Holy spirit, the helper who is God, who is going to be in you. Mm. He said to the disciples, you know him, he is with you, but he is going to be in you mm -hmm. and he is going to lead you and he is going to guide you. Yeah. He's going to remind you of all the things that I have said. There's Jesus doesn't leave any room for him or her. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying right. here? So when I put those two things together, I go, while I wouldn't just stop at Max Lucado giving an interview mm -hmm. to Jen Hatmaker, mm -hmm. referring to the Holy Spirit as him or her is a huge red flag in my mind. Yeah, me too. I that's, go, that's, oh man, are we at this point stumbling? Yeah. I mean, this this is outside of orthodoxy. This is this right. is the problem with the shack, right? Among other things. Yeah, you understand. Right. But it was popular. You had all kinds of Christians endorsing it mm -hmm. because it gave people this new and exciting way to view the Father, to view the Godhead. To me, I mean, it was, it it was, um, you know. It was yes, <laughs> yes. May, I mean, we should just yes, yeah. and just destructive to Christians attempting to learn who the Lord is. Yeah, you know, which is why you don't use novels and things like that mm -hmm. to learn who the Lord is. Mm -hmm. Go to the Word of God. Amen. How has God revealed Himself? That's what we to need to go. Us. Amen. You know, but He doesn't stop there, and so as He is continuing on in this conversation with Jen Hatmaker. Um, Jen Hatmaker leads him into this conversation about inclusivity, mm -hmm. which, you know, again, it's one of those things where I just go, oh, you know, <laughs> I, yeah. I hate, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't like, and I think that men are strong. I think that men are designed to be in the position of leadership, mm -hmm. but we have some, some strong feminists who have weakened the resolve of men mm. that when those men are in the presence of those types of women, mm -hmm. they falter. Yeah. And I got to just tell you, frankly, that angers me. Yeah. It upsets me because what I would want from a Max Licato mm -hmm. is a strong response to Jen Hatmaker's question. And I was going to say, if you listen to the interview, you can kind of hear him kind of ifing. I call it ifing. Mm -hmm. Like when he's getting ready to speak, it's kind of like, uh, and, and you know, like kind of, kind of like trying to measure what he's going to say. And I think he was really, not just because of wanting to be careful, but I think he was, he understood who he was talking to. It's the narrative today. And he wanted to say. The right thing. The right thing to not ruffle. And yield her to her womanhood. Yeah, and, and her people, the people, the circle. This is insane. Yeah. Let's listen to clip two. Here we go. Two days ago, I went to downtown San Antonio uh, to have lunch with a pastor of a downtown church uh, uh, that is uh, uh, caught up in the uh, uh, 
controversy mm -hmm. over whether or not to have uh, gay marriages. Oh yeah, uh -huh. and and so they've they've landed on the side of yes. Okay, they they will mm -hmm. they will have gay marriages, and uh, uh, they have about two hundred active members. Okay, but listen listen to this, they feed about eight hundred homeless people a week. Beautiful, about eight hundred homeless mm -hmm. people a week. Now. I, d I didn't go online to see what is said about this church in mm. social media. Sure. I would imagine it's not always positive mm -hmm. because of the stance they've taken on gay marriage. Mm. While I was with him and meeting their staff and walking through their building, that topic never came up. Mm. We were, I was just fascinated at, and humbled mm. at their ability to care for the homeless and the poor. And we connected right there. We connected right there. And 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 there's fellowship there. Yeah. There's fellowship. Th th does that make sense? We, oh, a hundred percent. I mean, if anything has ever been clear in Scripture, as we like to say that everything is, it's that our part of our faith community's responsibility is to care deeply for the poor and for yeah. the marginalized and hurting in our communities. Yes, it, of course, yeah. there's fellowship around that. You know what else has um, never <laughs> been more clear, Jen? Ooh. Jen, you know what else? Um, God's design for human sexuality, brother yeah. Max. And you have to stand um, for that right now. I don't today. Like I don't. Like, there's no question here. Yeah. You know, Will and I, we coined this um, this phrase, this term, um, <laughs> to describe people oh who do not have a broad-shouldered approach to the Word of God, who do not stand on it. Mm -hmm. All right. It. We describe the conversation as something sounding. Um, very similar to a person attempting to talk while eating soup. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. It's so we call that soup mouth, right? Soup mouth. <laughs> the question is now, and I want to say this as respectfully as I can. Gay marriage is not a controversy. Come on. Gay marriage is not a controversy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We have a turning away from orthodoxy mm -hmm. manifesting itself in all kinds of ways. Among those ways would be so-called gay marriage. Homosexuality does never, ever move in the Bible from being negative to favorable. Right. There is never a gray area about homosexuality ever spoken of in the word of God. There's no debate there. There's no controversy. We would only use the word controversy when we're trying to placate Mm -hmm. or cater to people's neo-Christianity. All right, we got to grab the break. Aaron the Addison's on American Family Radio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Aaron the Addison's on American Family Radio. We're just we're just trying to hold the line in our generation. Yeah. We don't have authority to change orthodoxy. Amen. Do you understand? We don't. We, that's not within our power. Okay. We submit to the Word of God. We don't author it. <laughs> we don't write it. And I don't care how prolific a writer we are. I don't care how many people listen to our podcast or how many celebrities are checking us out. You know. I don't. I don't care. Right. You're not big enough that you get to rewrite orthodoxy mm. ever. You just don't get to do that, okay? And, and it's the body of Christ. We have got to be bold enough to not only speak out, but one, we've got to be discerning enough to recognize when it's happening. Yeah. To know yeah. when people are saying things that may be subtle, but man, they are violently destructive. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit, you know him or her or whatever you want. No, what do you mean? Like, what, right, where right. have we ever heard that in life? Right. Like, that's there's not that's, there's not yeah. one place in Scripture where you hear or read of the Holy Spirit being referred to as her, right, or she. Mm -hmm. This is this is not shack Christianity. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That's a problem. It's a huge problem. And to call the vileness of homosexuality a controversy. As if, oh my goodness, you know, where, what do we, we don't know. We're going to have to, I don't know. Look, let me, let me tell you something. And then, and then we'll, we can start getting calls queued up. 
888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. Then I want to play a clip from The View, Will's favorite show. Oh, no. And, uh, and then we'll go to the phone we lines. Can, we can pass on that. But yeah. let, me, <laughs> let me just say this. You know what have been difficult conversations to have when you talk about the historicity of the Bible? Um, so the, the Bible, Old Testament to New Testament, you've had tough conversations around like the question of slaves. So you say, what is the Bible saying? So then you have to have a conversation with people where you talk to them about prescriptive and descriptive mm -hmm. um, narratives in the Bible. And then you have to have a conversation with people where you talk about understanding time and cultures and context and all of these things. And, and they require sit down time with people. That's legitimate. Yeah. Slavery. Even patriarchy, okay, mm -hmm. understanding times and cultures. The Bible yeah. allows for yeah. us to be able to understand this and grow in our knowledge of this. You know what does not fall into that category? Homosexuality. Not at all. Never once, never from <laughs> Old to New Testament, homosexuality does not fall into this category of a cultural understanding of it. Mm -hmm. It is always condemned. Mm -hmm. Old Testament to New Testament. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? There's no provision made for it. <laughs> right. You don't have Jesus in the New Testament saying, no, because of your hardness of heart. Moses said that men could sleep with men. <laughs> nope, you do not see it. It's not a controversial conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not a discussion that is, that is without um, emphatic, firm biblical support against. Right. Let's yeah. go to the phone lines. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. Will the Great, where do we go first? Let's go to Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hey, thanks for taking the call. Uh, I wanted to respond about the uh, Max Locato and the Jen Hatmaker, yeah, uh, I see this more and more that people are just, you know, they they want us to capitulate to this homosexual agenda, and it's just gotten to where it's it's almost unbelievable to me. I'm a Southern Baptist, and I'm even starting to see it in some of our churches mm. now. And it's it's a simple thing to me. I mean, why are there no uh, murderers parades or liars parades? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus loves us all. He died for every one of those homosexuals. But it's clear they have to repent just like any other mm -hmm. sinner like mm -hmm. we all are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what gets me. It's like they're, they're just trying to force it no matter what. And, and you know, you guys, I appreciate you all constantly uh, bringing it up because I, I was surprised when I, and I, but I looked it up online and you were telling it like it was with Max Lucado. It's, it's just a shame that he's... Uh, Seems like he's went down that path, too. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank Kyle. You. We appreciate your comments. And and look, and I want to say what we don't get from, from Max Licato, and we'll go straight, straight away to the next call, what we don't get is an endorsement of homosexuality. But what we get that I think is problematic is a willingness to ignore it in exchange mm -hmm. for the works of the church. Right. So they're doing great stuff. I mean, they might be embroiled in this controversy. It's not a controversy, but they're doing great stuff. So we don't, even in the, the rest of the interview, you don't hear him endorse that but it is a very soft approach to what the Bible has clearly condemned. And he used a word that kind of um, pierced me when he said, not pierced me, but it kind of opened my eyes. He said, and we had fellowship. I'm yes. like, okay, so True. you have fellowship with this church that's taken on this position mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, affirming homosexual marriage. That should be some type of rebuke yeah, well. in that, not just fellowship. Okay, we, we fed some people and we yeah. had a great old time. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad to, you know, feed the homeless, but he said we had fellowship. Oh, so that's an excellent that point. should have been a point where it's like in that fellowship, quote unquote, there should have been some questions asked about, asked <laughs> about, okay, about uh, you know, what was going on, their stance uh, concerning homosexual marriage. Well, because the Bible asks us what fellowship does light have with darkness? Exactly. There is, there is no fellowship. There is no fellowship. Yeah. That, so he said they have fellowship. Man, that's a great so. point. I agree with you. All right. Let's go to uh, Alexandra in Ohio. Hi, Alexandra. Hi. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, i just like to say very quickly that I was very disappointed when I heard about the Max Lucado interview. I thank the Lord for, for both of your clarity, teaching the lesson that you taught today. Uh, you presented it very clearly with this with the the sin of this generation of accepting homosexuality but not only that one of the things that really broke my heart is when they are saying about feeding the homeless um how important it is for us to do this and take care of people who need the help however we can't feed the homeless when we are let them go to hell because oh. they do not know mm. the truth of mm. Jesus Christ mm. will save them. And, right. and Jesus does not accept sin. We can't worship 
send and worship the Lord at the same time. Mm -hmm. So before we feed them, or as we feed them, we have to clearly present Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ. Alexandra? The only reason that I called Mm -hmm. is because I was thanking the Lord as the two of you were very clearly presenting what you presented in your in your program today Aww. thank you and it stay firm on the lord so you can have a program that can really preach the gospel the way you did today oh thank god you. bless thank you thank you god bless thank you, you alexandra. alexandra that clearly clearly but she's um, right on her point is <laughs> excellently made thank you so much Man. alexandra please pray for us pray yes. for us that we will continue to glorify god in this work that we do okay let's go to fran in uh, alabama Hi, friend. Hey, guys. Um, a lot has been said of what I wanted to say about the natural Cato, but um, I would say that when I read The Shack, I was deeply disturbed mm. by the feminine presence mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And for Max Cato to say his or her, whichever you want to call it, mm. I find that heartbreaking. Because mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. we, we know, we know what the Word says. Mm-hmm. But we have to remember that Max, Russell Moore, so many of those are in this group now that I don't know what has happened, Mm -hmm. but it's like we're going to milk everything down. Mm. And we're we're just, it's like the ones that won't have itching ears. Mm. That's exactly what it is, Fran. Yes. That is, God bless you. That is exactly what it is. And it does grieve us. It should grieve us all. It should. Yes. Yes. Let's go to uh, Stephanie in Arkansas. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Addison. How Hi. are you? Hey. Good, good. Hey, so I had a question. Um, I have a niece who's married to a woman, and uh, we grew up, you know, she grew up with us most of her life and then mm-hmm. kind of split from the family. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really tough because sometimes it's hard to know if we should be, you know, gathering with them. And, I, I mean, you love them, and they know where we stand, and they know that we've had this conversation with them. They know... Um, that we love them, you know, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it's really hard. Yeah, um, yeah. But holidays, for instance, um, holidays are really tough because I have kids and I'm not sure mm. if um, I want them around my kids, you know, when they openly have this marriage. So what are your thoughts on that, I guess? Let me ask you this one question before you go, Stephanie. Your niece and the the woman that she is living in a marriage-esque relationship with, are they Christians? Um, they grew up, both grew up in Christian households, but I would say, um, I don't think they're actively living a Christian life. Obviously it's hard to say, you know, Mm -hmm. if someone's a Christian, if they're in this marriage and they're happily disobeying the word of God, you know? Okay. So if, let me just say this, Stephanie, if you want to listen on the line here, I'll give my commentary and then we'll try to squeeze in at least a couple more calls. Um, let me say this. There's the Bible prescribes for us how to deal with professing believers who are in unrepentant sin. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us not to fellowship with them. Right. But Paul is very clear in that he says this is not for an unbelieving world, because if Mm -hmm. that were the case, you'd have to go out from the world. Okay, so he's saying that's not what I'm saying to you. He Mm -hmm. says that anyone who calls himself a brother don't have anything to do with them. Now, I will say this. I wouldn't have my kids around an environment where there was drinking and cussing and smoking. Mm -hmm. So if you elect to protect your kids from that which is abhorrent to God, then that is your choice. That's not hateful. That's you being a parent. I would put open, brazen homosexuality on display in that category. I sure would. That's my personal conviction, Stephanie. The Lord will lead you. But look, if I had family members where they were big time cussers and drinkers and smokers, and that's the kind of environment, we're not doing Christmas at your house. Right. And the Addisons have no problem with that. Guys, the first time (laughs) you sting a person with your rejection, Mm -hmm. it gets easier. Yeah. Yeah. You, you love your kids. You want to protect them. It's a them. standard. This is, yeah, that's it's right. a standard and, you know, and you'll find that people would adhere to it. You know, and we don't, we're not being mean or anything like nope. that, but there's a certain standard. Exactly so, right. Let's yeah. try to squeeze in one more call. All right. Let's go to Eddie in Virginia. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Hey, great show, guys. God Thank bless you. you. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to, uh, to add this in the conversation we, we've had today. I think it's important to remember because I've known, I've known gay couples myself. Mm-hmm and older gay couples and one of them when one of them passed away it was terrible i mean it was awful and the you know i just they have true feel they have true feelings i'm not i'm not upholding it mm-hmm. and i'm not upholding gay marriage but at the same token i 
I don't think we need to be, de- and I'm not saying you are, but mm-hmm. we don't, I don't think we need to be demonizing it either because mm-hmm. these people have true feelings. And do I understand it all? No, I don't. Yeah. But, let me say this, Eddie. I, that, I hear what I hear. I what, that, let me let me say this because we're going to run out of time. Brother, I absolutely hear what you're saying. I absolutely hear what you're saying. But let me say this. We cannot say to a liar and, you know, and it's okay Mm -hmm. because we understand what the wages of sin is. It's death. So when we understand that, we can't sugarcoat what we're talking about. Now, we must show compassion to the person who's caught up in lying. We want them to come out of that, but we're not going to call it something other than lying. Until tomorrow, Lord willing. God bless.